All right, what's going on dudes and welcome back to Minecraft. Today I thought I'd take you on a little run through of a set of three mods all having to do with redstone. That's whether you are a complete novice or someone who goes about building ALUs in game will all serve to make your life much easier when you're working with redstone. So first we'll take a look at the vertical redstone mod, which if you have ever worked with redstone at any point, I'm sure is something you have wished for and it's Oh man, it's so convenient being able to place redstone vertically so that rather than having to create staircases or stacks of torches which cause lots and lots of delays, you can simply place your redstone on any vertical surface. And voila, life made easier. Now the only sort of confusion can come in actually how you destroy the wiring. In, you can't actually hit straight on there's this sort of weird invisible hitbox that appears at the base of the the block that the redstone is occupying and you actually have to hit that in order to destroy the redstone but other than that very self-explanatory something that I'm sure everyone has wished for at some point or another and uh, very 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 convenient it works just the same with torches just another quick example that's about all there is to it, but obviously the possibilities with it are endless, to be completely cliche, but accurate. <laughs> so the next thing we'll take a look at is the instant redstone mod, which is made by the same person that created the vertical redstone mod. He actually created the finite liquid mod as well. But this allows you to create a set of five varying gates that update instantly when you change well, however however you input signals into the, the different types. So first off, we'll make an inverter, an instant inverter. Next, we can go ahead and create an instant repeater. Then we can go ahead and create an instant memory latch, an instant AND gate, and lastly, and instant OR gates. Now obviously the instant repeaters and the instant inverters act just like these repeaters and or uh, set up with a block and torch. The others actually simplify more complicated systems for you. We'll get to those in just a minute. But just to show you the instant aspect of it, uh, I've set up two different lines. One is with vanilla repeaters, and one is with your instant repeaters. These repeaters are all set up on the lowest tick delay possible, and you'll notice when I hit the lever, there's quite a delay between the time when I flip it and when the door opens. Now, obviously, if this is in something like an ALU and you've got hundreds and hundreds of these going for a calculation, that's going to cause a large amount of delay between when you input and when you get a result. Now the beauty of the instant redstone is, voila, as soon as you flip that switch, the door opens. And that is why it is so wonderful. So the different types of gates you get are, here's the OR gate. When you flip one input, all the others change as well. That applies for any one of these four inputs. And that's that for the OR gate. This is simply an inverter updates instantly as well. I've said instantly quite a bit here, but that's that. Now here is a simplified memory latch so that rather than having to create a vanilla RS nor latch as I usually do the, the three by three square with a torch on the inside of each corner block, well, there you go. Door opens when you hit the right button and door closes when you hit the left button, updates instantly once again, and you could obviously do an automatically resetting system as well if you'd like to do that, but it makes it so the entire RS NOR latch is simply in that block right there. Finally, we've got the instant AND gate, which, as it would suggest and as you've seen me do in previous videos, both of these switches need to be flipped in order for the door to open, and that's how that works. When either one is turned off, whoops. <laughs> The door won't open, both have to be flipped, and updates instantly. I've said that 
quite a bit. Perhaps in the future he'll include an X or gate, something like that. I know he did say in the forum post, feel free to suggest different types of gates you want to include, so I guess there is a suggestion. <laughs> now finally, this is a mod made by a different creator. Well, let's go ahead and clear our inventory of these repeaters here. And this is actually a programmable gate. So that rather than having, say, preset instant gates here that come along with the mod, you can actually program this gate to do whatsoever you would like it to do. So it has a whole menu of options when you right click it. So for reference, this is the back, this is obviously the left, this is the right, and this is the front, up and down or common sense. <laughs> and if we right click it, it has a whole table of, of things you can do. So let's actually go ahead and start off by setting some inputs and output for, I'll do an XOR gate. So I'll have an input on the left, input on the right, and we'll have it causing an updates from the front. So let's actually go ahead and set up a door. His doors are always wonderful ways to demonstrate things. So first off, we want to go in and choose our inputs. So that's what this left-hand column is. Inputs are right, left, back, front, down, and up. So we have right and left inputs. So let's go ahead and select those two. And then let's go ahead and just disable all these default outputs. And you'll notice that everything goes off. Let's actually go ahead and set up our levers really quickly. And now let's set up the XOR gate. So it might look a bit intimidating at first, but I assure you it's, it's actually quite simple. So once you've selected your inputs, these columns right here, or these rows, will go over all the different possibilities for outputs. So since we want the output to go out of the front here, we're going to only pay attention to this row that says front on it. So what these columns do is this means 0, 0. So when both of these inputs are off, if we selected this, well, that would turn the output on. But we don't want that. So we actually want, for an XOR gate, we want it so that the two inputs have to be in opposite states in order for the door to open. So if we select this, which is 0, 1, when we turn that input, the door will open. And if we select 1, 0, when we flip this input, the door will also open. But since 1, 1 is not selected, which would correspond to both of these being turned on, the, the, the door will stay closed. So you get an XOR gate. Both of these have to be in opposite states for the door to open up, hence, well, suggesting that this has a current outputting from it. So that's how that works. So let's go ahead and quickly convert it to an AND gate. Why not? So all we have to do is uncheck both of these and check 1, 1, and then we have ourselves an AND gate. So when one of the two is on, nothing happens. But when both of them are on, door opens. And that is how it all works. And obviously, if we want to have, say, the input coming up from the top, let's go ahead and grab some dirt and do that really quickly. We can demonstrate that with a torch. So let's go ahead and get ourselves a torch placed on top there. And now if we go back in and go to the up row and select 1, 1, you'll notice that it works identically to the door. So that is the programmable redstone block, redstone gates, whatever you want to call it. And it's pretty cool. It basically makes your life much easier so long as you get used to using the, the truth table, which may look a bit intimidating at first, but once you play around with it a bit, it's, uh, it's pretty simple. So anyway, that's about it for the three mods all having to do with redstone. <laughs> so I hope you've enjoyed watching. Links so you can download all of these should you choose to can be found in the description. And that's about it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.